What's the point of an acid-base titration? And what is a titration anyway? In this movie, we answer these questions. For now, we aren't going to worry too much about calculations. We want to get the big picture of what a titration involves and the reason why we do titrations. After that, we can focus on numbers and calculations. Before we begin, remember to like and to subscribe and check out my website www.learnscience.coza. So why do we perform a titration? We do it to find out information about a solution. Let's call it our solution of interest. What do we know and what don't we know about our solution of interest? We know what substance it is, but we do not know what concentration it is. We don't know how many moles of the solute is dissolved in the solvent in the solution. And that is what we're trying to find out, and that's why we do the titration. For example, here, we know that our solution of interest is a sodium hydroxide solution, but we don't know what its concentration is. So we pour a certain volume of the solution into a conical flask. If we could find out how many moles of sodium hydroxide are in there, then we could divide that by the volume that we poured into the flask, and then we'd know the concentration of the sodium hydroxide solution of interest. We perform the titration to find out how many moles of sodium hydroxide are in there. So what is a titration, and how can it tell us how many moles of solute are in our solution of interest? In a titration, we use another solution, a standard solution, to determine how many moles of solute must be in our solution of interest. First, what is a standard solution? It's a solution of known concentration. We also know what substance it is. So, for example, here, our standard solution is 0, 0,1 molar sulfuric acid solution. Unlike the solution of interest for the standard solution, we do know its concentration. In this case, 0, 0,1 molar, which is the same as 0, 0,1 mole per decimeter cubed. Notice that in this example, we use an acid as our standard solution because our solution of interest is a base. If our solution of interest was an acid, then we must use a base. As the standard solution. What do we do with the standard solution and how does that help us to figure out the amount of our solution of interest in that flask? We pour some of the standard solution into a burette. A burette is a long glass tube with volume markings on it and it's got a tap at the bottom and we add just the right amount of volume of standard solution to our solution of interest using it. The right volume, what does that mean? The right volume so that equivalent amounts of the two solutions react with one another. In other words, we open the tap until the reactants have completely reacted with one another by partnering up according to the ratio given in the balanced equation. For example, in this case, we know that the ratio in which sodium hydroxide and sulfuric acid react is 2 is to 1. So every two sodium hydroxide molecules in the solution of interest need one sulfuric acid molecule to come through the burette into the flask to react with them and neutralize them. So can you see that that means that if we can figure out how many sulfuric acid molecules we needed to add to cause neutralization, then from that we can deduce, well, how many moles of sodium hydroxide must have been there in our solution of interest. And that's what the titration is all about. Using the known information about the amount of standard solution we need to add to reach the equivalence point so that we can calculate how many moles of the solution of interest must have been present to have reacted equivalently with that amount of standard solution. But how do we know 
when that equivalence point has been reached. How do we know when we must close the tap of the burette and stop the titration? That's why we need to add a pH indicator to the solution of interest. In this case, we've added universal indicator. And because the solution of interest is basic, it turns purple. Now we're going to add the acidic standard solution by titration. But before we start, we need to read the volume of the base that's inside the burette. And we write that down. Then we open the tap. Our standard solution runs out through the burette tap into the flask containing the solution of interest. Although we can't see it, what's happening in there on the submicroscopic level is that acid and base molecules are reacting with one another to neutralize one another. The reason why we can't see that on the macroscopic level is that the indicator stays purple because there's still an excess of base, an excess of hydroxide ions. But now we can see that we're getting close to the equivalence point, so we need to operate the tap more carefully. If you're very good at a titration, you manage to end the titration at the moment when one drop, or maybe even just half a drop, turns the color of the indicator. If you've chosen an appropriate indicator for the particular acid and base that you're titrating, the point at which the color changes is the equivalence point, the point when stoichiometrically equivalent amounts of the acid and base have reacted. If you also manage to stop the titration at that moment, then you can use the information that you have to calculate the information you're trying to find, how many moles of solute were in the solution of interest in the flask. What is the information that we have and how do we use it to get that? After we've closed the tap of the burette, we must read the volume of the solution in the burette again, and we write that down. So we have the initial and the final volume readings from the burette. We subtract the smaller from the larger number to find the volume of the standard solution which went into the solution of interest. We know the concentration of the standard solution, so we simply multiply that by the volume that we added to find out how many moles of the standard solution we add it to the solution of interest. And then we use the balanced equation of the reaction between the acid and the base to deduce how many moles of the solution of interest must have been there. Now, here's an important question that you need to answer to check your understanding. When you've finished everything that I've just described, then you'll have an answer. And that answer is the number of moles of the solution of interest. For example, the number of moles of sodium hydroxide in that flask. The question is, for which point in that process that I've just described were there that number of moles of sodium hydroxide in the flask? Does that answer refer to the number of moles of sodium hydroxide that were in the flask before the titration or after we had performed the titration. Pause the movie while you answer that question. If necessary, rewind to get the question again, but do not proceed until you've answered this yourself. I hope your answer was that the answer we get refers to the amount we have before the titration. For example, the number of moles of sodium hydroxide in the flask before the titration. So the purpose of the titration is to tell us about the solution of interest before the titration has started. And the titration process necessarily changes that solution in order to measure it. The way to determine how many moles of solution of interest we have there in that flask is to react those moles with the standard solution. For example, to react those moles of base with the standard solution of acid 
and then from seeing how much acid it takes to mop up all the base that's in that flask and the solution of interest, then from that we can work out well how much of the solution of interest must have been there before we started.